in upper division of the DPC League. We're gonna find out. We're gonna head over to our commentary duo of Moxie and Fog. I do love me some late night Dota. We got mm -hmm. Dreamhack after dark, guys. But uh, no, we do see, you know, I don't think I would call it a boar snore. Is that what he called it? It's so straight. I mean, it's it's the standard. It's the bread and butter it's the standard, for them, right? That's why. Well, look at Tundras. It's all it's all fun, right? It's minus armor a plenty. We've got a hairball that's going to be coming online eventually with potential time lapses from an agonims for the Weaver and stuff like that too. And some cool lanes. I, I actually think this back. approach is really interesting. I, I do want to see which ones they do take though. I do want to see if they do decide to end up putting this Enchantress versus the Tide, or if they do the Enchantress versus the Grimstroke, because they both have their benefits. Dispelling the Inkswell inside of the laning phase, either having a creep to just bully and push away the Grimstroke, or you just play it versus the Tide Hunter, where you have your Impetus that does great damage versus Tide in that lane phase. So we'll see, because they also do have Skeeter, the Weaver versus Tide Hunter. Bugs can be very annoying, the Swarm, things you can't dispel. Lots of them, actually, in this game, too. Quills later on for Tide Hunter will be problematic, and yeah, I'm liking actually this heavy minus armor draft that I'm seeing coming out from Tundra. And I've been raving and I've been hoping to see more Bristleback because I think this Agonims is absolutely crazy. If you start to get like a snowball going on too, the Quails just become absolutely crazy. But Lines, tried and tested lineup. They've been so good with the way they can group up around the DK and the Tide, so... We'll see which one ends up prevailing. And this isn't the first time that we've seen Tundra run sort of some innovative strats, right? No. So, like, a big thing for me is definitely how greedy Snake King is able to be usually. So we've seen him, you know, running the jungle Enigma the couple times that, you know, he ran the, the jungle Venomancer, too. Mm -hmm. But the problem with having these kinds of drafts is everything kind of has to go perfect, right? Yeah. So... They do have good ways to, if they do get ahead, they have great ways to stay ahead because they have great ways to take objectives, either Roche or Towers. They can do a lot of different types of pressure here with Bristleback and Weaver. And they do have some okay fight. They don't have great team fight, but they have some okay stuff if they do get ahead. Alliance's team fight is going to be way stronger for the most part throughout this game. But if Tundra is able to start getting ahead, they could just snowball out of control. I actually like the way that Brian put it. It's either going to own or it's going to fall flat on its face. <laughs> There's no in-between ground here, guys. It's either going to be incredible or it's going to be a disgrace now. But we do see that this Enchantress has made her way over into the lane with the Grimstroke. So that is where they are yep. going to be positioning that for that nice dispel, of course. It's also just a super strong lane. Like the Alchemist, this Acid Spray is super effective even versus Lifestealer. They have a hard time dealing with the pressure that comes out. As long as they can make sure they get all these last hits here at the 33 should be a pretty good start for him we do see the warding coming out century ward to block hard camp even an observer ward to drop and block that medium camp too on the left side there from fng and from alliance down bottom 33 drags the wave that limp's already just sitting so very low dealing with all of this close yeah. play and but he does of course have himself a stick very very important when you're lining up against that bristleback but no we'll have money. to be very mindful about how much uh how many stacks gets on him anyways? Yeah, it should overall be a bit, kind of like a free farm lane for the two of them. Limp shouldn't get brought down unless you make some like massive mistakes. Same thing for nine, they should just be farming. I think the other lanes are the more exciting ones. Hanskin it could be at risk of dying. Same thing for Mess4. The damage that come out can come out from Snapfire and Weaver is quite overwhelming. They do have a sentry in the lane though. Alliance, making sure every time you do play versus Weaver, you always want to have a sentry. So every time he Shikuchi's through, you're able to get extra harassment. And both sentries actually out of range of each other. So Tundra likely to bring out a secondary one to deward this. I do like the pressure that they're placing over here on 33, right? This is your factory elk. This yeah. is your alchemist that needs to be getting those items. Otherwise, he's just kind of floating around on the map, just taking up farm. So I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, the pressure is definitely needed to be placed upon him here. But uh, yeah, like you said, over here in the mid lane, it's just going to be a bit of a gentleman's agreement. Both of them very, very tanky and uh, just going to stick around, pull up or, oh. you know, hit the free fire. Oops. Let Missing an easy range creep there. Nine does have his bottle delivered. And does have to play around the, you know, the breathe fire. Their damage reduction is a little bit annoying, at least for nine. So Limp might pull out a bit ahead in those last hits in the laning phase. But I think then nine, he goes to jungle. He's going to have some stacks probably ready from snaking. And he'll be able to get that extra enabled farm from his teammates. Well, here's the other concern for me, right? Is that Limp is on that DK. Yes. And... This Bristleback is going to want to fight. Like, he's going to want to fight, like, very, very, you know, early on. The second that he leaves that lane, though, there's going to be pressure on their tower. So, again, I yep. feel like this is going to be one of those situations where the fight's going to come to him in the middle lane, most likely. And, uh, you know, again, having that negative armor will come in handy, but it'll allow more space for Nico, baby, again. Mm -hmm. 
I think Nigel's just chilling out here. He's probably not going to leave the mid lane too much. Just going to steal away bounty runes, pull the lit creep waves into small camps, into the medium camps, get this farm efficiency onto, farm efficiency onto Bristleback. You jungle way faster. DK, jungling is not really an option early on. <laughs> You just have to deal with creeps. And yeah, he's going to start stacking them up. The Eternal Envy. I was about to say this. I've seen yeah. Envy do this. I remember him going between the tier two, tier three. Everybody pinging. They're just like, what do we do about Envy? What do we do? They couldn't do anything. Yep. Did Radiant it from like courier. super early on. You baby's curry are actually following during all this, so. FNG is going to go over and mess with him a little bit, though. Some stroke just to slow down Nine's farm. Even going to ink swell him on top, too, just to keep him in the area. So he's going to get him low, having to burn his entire bottle charges and then the next rune is going to be probably super important here for nine he still has his bounty rune available but he actually has to call for snaking to come over because snaking isn't having to play the lane since we do see 33 he's just doing lane mechanics look at 33's laning just pulling the wave back constantly all the way back here denying full waves from the life stealer how much is that going to come back to bite them Dyer's bottom tower. What, Nico, baby? No, no, no. He's... The fact that, that this alchemist is being allowed to just hit these creeps like this. They can't really punish it so much. That's the problem. Like, when you're able to get these pulls, once you get your boots, there's nothing Grimstroke and Lifesuit can do. You just have to try to, like, either push the wave into the tower so that he misses some creeps, or you make moves and just get these pulls. Is Houndskin? Houndskin's like very, very low. They've already used a Kuchi, though. LSI coming out to try to juke around here in the trees, and they don't have the vision here on Houndskin. Either trying, walks right okay. into him though. We'll be able to get the first blood. Cut. Has to be careful though, because Escort is just chonking him down. He gets the kill on Skeeter during all of this. So I think if you're Alliance, you're perfectly okay with losing Yelena in exchange for the Weaver. Most definitely. S4 is even going to go for a Morbid Mask, it looks like, in the laning phases to keep his sustain up. Because there's a lot of harassment that's coming up from side of the Tundra. And, you know, this actually, looking at it more, this is like the most valuable Magic Stick game ever. Weaver and Bristleback <laughs> on one side, that's always just the best to be able to get those picked up as snaking. Like, just continuing to kind of just mess with stuff here. They will start to get some stacks ready for 33 so that he can get these good timings on his Soul Ring into that Ags eventually. A little bit off the mark here for Hanskin as the cookie hop forward. Go. They've got the bugs. Should be able to collect themselves another kill here. Vata will get it this time around, and S4 is forced back. That's a lot of negative armor in this lane. Yeah, still very strong lane. And we did say, you know, if the cookie connected on the first one, they would have gotten the kill maybe a little bit easier. Didn't have to commit as hard because that cookie missed that they couldn't. As six is already finished up on limp before nine was able to. Now nine does hit his six as well. But yeah, we'll constantly get poked from limp. As Lip is going to keep his catapult alive and eventually maybe even get some tower damage here. Let's see what Nine does to make up for the fact here. Looks like he's, he's thinking about going back and stacking for a second here. Yeah, he's going to do that. While we see Hanskin, he's going to start prepping the stacks too for his Tide Hunter. Two what I like to see. But on the flip side of this too, I feel like Alliance is one of those teams that really takes good care of their jungle. I they feel do. like we're going to... Oh, bottom lane. Snaking? Ooh, yeah, he's fine. Uh, I feel like Let's we're going to see some sort of invasion, right? When you've got a bristleback, something like this, you know, and you hit those item timings, you're feeling Dyer's strong, just going for an invasion. Even like just bringing 33 along too. It just makes so much happen here. Yeah, they just might on the side of Tundra. And they might even just bring like like Alchemist over too. But I do think Alliance, they can fight back over there. They have great fighting heroes early on with their very stable natural draft that they have played. Nine, looks like he's asking for a TP mid. It doesn't have his bottle filled up. Might just have Snaking come in to fill that one up so he can keep his presence here. As he's falling a bit behind that DK from that little swing around that he did throughout the tower. Limp is just, he's playing the lane. Bristleback is cutting the waves and did fall behind a tiny bit there. Well, full bottle being delivered here for nine in here and lane also has some raindrops as well so they're just gonna have to, i mean they're gonna have to accept the fact that nine is gonna get an agonims very early on 33 he's just getting all the farm in the world they can't actually invade over here they're checking out to see if there's any blocked camps here snaking double centering their triangle this is just you know setting up the alchemist to further farm the bristleback as well i like this move this is very very smart let's get that ags online there or nine cookie hop forward again though four it's gonna walk away here Gonna go for a bit of a dive. Does have the ravage if necessary if he needs to pop. It probably doesn't want to do it. Oh, he does. He wants it. He wants to get this kill on Fata. It's punishing him because that tower has enough damage. Now we'll go Fata. And Skeeter's not gonna be able to do anything here as Nine does get taken out with a good rotation coming out from the side of Alliance. They bring all three. Lifestyle is not laning versus anybody bottom. So they're like, okay, let's just part playing more around limp, shutting down the bristleback. The greed from Tundra 
needs to get punished in Alliance. They do do that, and they're going to start hitting that mid tower with the DK. Tide gets a kill too. All looking good for Alliance. Dyer's Even though this Alchemist is farming, attack. they're making their own moves and getting quite a lot out of the map of themselves. Hanskin won't be able to get that Arcane Rune. But the tower is getting chipped away. Going to be down to near half health already here. Dragon Land of LSA. No, no. Just going to go throw out a Dragon Slave over here. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And they've gotten a little bit of damage over on the mid tower, as expected. And nine is quite poor, though. This Bristleback behind the offlane Tidehunter now at this point. Yeah, but he's also just waiting, right? In terms of being able to uh, get his Ags online. Yeah, that's definitely. Like instant. Yeah, definitely needs his own type of build up though here. Like he's he usually you, you see these bristlebacks already have the vanguard finished right. up, so he's slowed down quite a bit from these moves here as he's had to pick up these these small little items in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see if this greed does end up working. Snaking needs to be careful here. FNG with stroke of fate, not gonna be able to quite connect it. Nico baby though, he's hungry. He's looking to get some damage down here. Does have to be careful though as nine stacked up those goo and quills. Over on the Grim Stroke and Skeeter in the top lane just dancing around this Tide Hunter for the most part. Not sitting too, too pretty though here in terms of net worth right now. The line doesn't look fussed by this at all. DK just goes to the jungle, he's chilling. Lina goes to mid to soak up experience. Grim Stroke and Lifestealer just kind of doing whatever they want. The Lifestealer, as we said, free lane under no pressure. And it feels like it will be like that for the most of this laning phase. Until Weaver makes the move bottom, there's no pressure that's going to be coming out to uh, Nico Baby. So some good efficient moves. FNG even pulling the lane back a little bit to get more levels. It's just, yeah, playing their draft very cleanly here. It's accepting the fact Alchemist is going to get this item, but who cares? We're playing with our super comfort. There's something to be said when you're into the game three. I know everyone's very excited. We always like to see something new and innovative coming out, but uh, there's something to be said for tried and true. Absolutely. And this has been Alliance in the, their best form nine, when they right? go for these uh, triple tanky cores. It's been the best that they've looked. Nine. Trying to get this 10 minute run. Immediately trying to get Follow up with the LSA. Hey, it's been over here on Snake King, but the fight is on. And there's a snap bar. Kiss is coming in, though. We'll make them back off as FNG most likely going to fall here. We'll fall to Snake King. Skeeter is here, and he's hunting. Probably wants to get his hands on Hanskin, but not going to be able to quite find the Lina. It's good timing for Fada to get that six. Even though it's not the most successful kisses, just any type of aggression they can put out. But Nico Baby gets a tower bottom. The old smoke and mirrors. Yes, you're going to be taking a fight there, but we're going to take your tower. And of course, being a life stealer, the ability to just rage and TP out super, super value. Yeah, so he's going to be able to do that this game. No way to BKB Pierce disable on their lineup on the side of Tundra. Well, not yet. Eventually, I'm sure we'll see something like this to play, but... They go for the Ravage, man. Fata is just cannon fodder for S4. He sure is, and I mean, S4 is not caring about just throwing it out there. That says everything about the state of the game. They're not feeling like they need this for some big fight, because no big fight's gonna come to them. Tundra, they don't have that big team fight. They have just this kind of wonky lineup that's waiting for this Aghanims to cut online for this hairball to really start doing its damage. That's got to be a bit of a pressure point here, especially for Tundra, when the fact that your enemies, they know exactly your timings and they can keep tabs on you. You know, you've been saying, you know, trying to get more and more vision up, trying to keep tabs over on this alchemist. Yeah, in a good way to deal with the, uh, you know, the quill damage since it's all physical, they're going to be able to itemize for armors and armor. We see S4, he's going straight for a Vlad. Some small amounts of armor also sustain that they can stay inside the fights versus these quills that will come out. 33 has an axe. And he's given it now to nine. There it is, the hairball. All right. Oh, sorry. The, the, this is just the, the other one. Sorry, probably. This is just the goo. And of course, the crazy stacks that can't come out from it, too. But if a hairball, he's going to be the next choice when he hits 20. Of course. Sorry. I don't know why I was saying hairball the whole time, though. You're just so excited, excited, man. I'm just excited because so I know excited. that's what the next item is going to be <laughs> when he gets to that 20 minute mark. But this does enable so much. The Warpath stacks do get crazy how much damage you're able to actually put out. We'll take when that. am I going to see a bristle cat? Bristle you know, cat. he's got a hairball. Like I, mean, I feel right. like Bristle Cat, it just it makes sense. I hope not. We don't want to change the <laughs> change my immersion. Don't ruin Radiant's it. Middle Dude, have you seen some of these sets? Ah, that's true. <laughs> what, what do you mean, slaughter our bristle, uh, slaughter our crystal maiden? <laughs> Nine though. Again, he is just stacking up everything that he can. The pressure is on over on this mid tower, and it feels like Tundra they've hit this timing that they want to start being very, very aggressive on. But smoke and coming out from the side of Alliance. And with so much minus armor too, like they can go threaten Roche on after these objectives very early on. Alliance does have good fight around Roche, but minus armor might just be something too devastating as you can't dispel the swarm or those quill stacks oh. on the tide on it. Uh-oh. Speaking of stacks, 
Death Knight has found himself a nice tasty stack over here in the Radiant Triangle, and he is gonna oh, devour God. that. Free of me. That's quite painful. It is indeed. She said though, Alliance not looking too fast, still sticking to their game plan, nice but the pace is gonna kick up quick. Skeeter on the prowl. S4 trying to get into position here. Sapphire has come out, and S4 realizes I just need to get out. Oh You're my. not gonna be able to he do it though. Dies. It's too much damage. I can't believe that actually brought him down. The timering is set. Now, Alliance, you gotta you gotta just deal with it. Like, what do you do in response here? You have Nico Baby still super farmed. The Tundra kicking up the pace. Dyer's top tower. We've got a blink on attack. limp. Radiant Walks right into nine. They say hello. I doesn't want to deal with him. Look at him. Immediately just backing off the blink. Goes right over to his tower for safety, but nine is a oh. big tanky lad. He's uh, not afraid of anything. Zero cast time is just so nice. This as we said, minus armors, it's really gonna start being such a big problem. But like we said, Vlad's is online for S4. They have the DK armor. So he will be at least a little bit survivable. Armlet also done for Nico Baby a bit some time ago. So small little things that they can deal with. FNG though, getting hunted. You can't find him. They can't yet. 33 is going to stun himself. Do they just figure it's not worth the time? It looks like it's not. Yeah, probably expecting him to have TP'd out. And saying about minus armor, they've got a solar crest on snaking too. Mm. So all that minus armor is online for the side of Tundra now here. And a double oh, and damage. And baby. Quick, easy one, snaking, a bit far up. Gets caught out from the blink dagger from Limp. Radiant's has nine, he just now has no fear. 2,000 HP bristle back with the Vanguard finished up. And he's gonna get some crazy timings after this here. SNY next on the menu, then he won't have to worry about getting chain stunned. He won't have to worry about actually facing the wrong direction if he does get stunned too in some situations. As yeah, we do see that poor snaking. And 33 just continues to get the farm away. He's going to do the same build that we saw. Well, not the full same build, but what we saw from Seb since he's playing versus all this magic damage. He's going to go for the pipe right afterwards. They're gonna, yeah. I mean, they can go straight into the pipe, uh, into the Roche, I think, after this. Pipe plus all this minus armor. Yeah, yeah look at no it. time. And a D, as you said, DD from earlier, too. It's just dead. I don't, I, Alliance can't contest this. Look at how quick this is going to die. Minus, my god, minus 33, it. 34. It's just gone. Roshan was that a five second round? Holy crap. The damage is real coming out from Tundra. It's going to uh, have to put Alliance a little bit on the back foot here as they figure out how do they approach these fights? They're not online yet. No, they're not. The Desto will help because the armor will be a bit low on the Bristleback for sure. Same thing for like the Alchemist, but Radiant's Weaver is a counter top overall top. versus that life steal in the game. And Nisquiter is getting a lot of space now to farm up because of the pressure that's coming out from this Bristleback who just has, they can't deal with him. Look, he's just, he's just killing a tower by himself top. He's like, okay. I mean, they're not gonna be able to do anything even without the Aegis, so. No one wants to touch him. No one wants to go anywhere near this Bristleback right no. now. It's a matter of trying to find some sort of a pickoff, perhaps. You can see some pressure being placed over on the tier two. In fact, that's something four. They're gonna try to blow up Fata and they will be able to find it immediately. How's it? Just teleporting out. Oh, Ooh, that was so that close. Was unbelievably close, bit of a. Ooh, the damage. under attack. Continue to try to play their game, trying to avoid this Tundra, Tundra game plan that is completely hitting its timing. They're executing it very, very nicely, yep. and Alliance is uh, still trying to find that footing, trying to find the opening, and trying to find the farm. Yeah, but even with the farm, like the the life stealer, you know, farming is gonna be great for him. But he's into a counter. He's not yes. only into the weaver, but also this bristleback's gonna be enormous. And these ags will constantly get pumped out eventually too. Like 33, Dyer's he's gonna go for his own build right now. You know, attack. building items for himself. Right. Go for this Vlad's next afterwards. But eventually too, there's gonna be another ags that goes on Skeeter. And then you know you can't kill the bristleback once. What if he just gets time lapse when you get very close to killing him too? Which will eventually be the thing. So Alliance, you know, what is the plan? I think that's the question they're asking themselves right now. I mean, obviously, you know, the big thing is maybe they make a mistake, right? Maybe yeah. they show someone, they're able to get like a chain stun off on Skeeter. They just try to, you know, find these openings and pull off ganks. Yeah. But the way that Tundra's playing, and we saw this actually earlier too, the way that they play together. It is pretty difficult here. Skeeter hunting on the back lines. Looking for those FNG. supports. I found a squishy one. We do enough damage before FNG can TP out. Not quite. Close. Not yet. Quite close. 
Nico, baby's just, yeah, like you said, just trying to play his own game. That's up. Going for the AC next to deal with all this insane armor, the minus armor that is going to be coming out from Tundra. And they do have the crazy team fight. That is always yes. going to be the case, right? With the Tidehunter, with the Grimstroke and everything. But will it be enough? Will it ever be enough damage to actually deal with this Bristle? It's going to be Nico, baby, who's the decider. Thinking about going in here. He doesn't have a neutral item yet on Nico, baby, huh? No, not yet. No, didn't find anything good for himself just yet. Seven, the past 17 oh minutes, too. A little bit of a hunt here coming out from Nine. Just running down Nico, baby. Look at this negative armor. Seven the more paths. Out. Over on the side, though, Fata does get spotted here by S4 on Hanskin. So we'll take out Fata. There'll be no kisses available, but look at the damage again. Oh my God. Turning the ground. The kiting just... is real, though. Nine just running at them. That, uh, it's plus two tech. The seven more pass stacks. It just gets worse, too, as it goes later on. Once he hits level 18, we'll have nine stacks. S and Y already finished. He's got a quick silver amulet, too. A beautiful item that you can pick up on Bristol as you're constantly spamming your spells out. He'll be moving that at super fast pace. I'm just definitely feeling himself like Fada. He dies, but he's like, Fine. who cares? Yeah, he doesn't care. Double damage about to run out now over here on Skeeter, but he has been bullying poor S4 with this as Limp continues to put the pressure over onto the other lane. Good moves from Limp still. He's trying to at least do, like he said, play their own game. Just avoid the Tundra train. Nico Baby even just saying, okay, whatever. I'm going to go hit the tier one, but Tundra might just go high ground here. I don't know how they stop them either. Dyer's yeah, you get a beautiful Ravage off perhaps, forward. but how are you going to get in there? How, he's just, you're just going to have Nico Baby getting kited the entire time, I think. You just got to spam it here with FNG. Radiance top tower. Well, he's trying attack. to do as Limp going right back Dyer's into the base. Hanskin also attack. does have his Aether Lens finished up, so he does have the distance where he can spam these stuns, but Dyer's Timer's been hit. Spamming out that stroke of fate, Dragon Slave, but the buildings eventually, they just collapse. Look at how fast they're taking it out. That's four. Okay, Nico Baby, he's in. Had to do a bit of this damage here, but they're just gonna try to force back his nine. He's just feeling so powerful, so strong. Close that. All Moving these stacks, up seven paths of wars. Okay, there we go. That's the first light down. Exercise and patience here. They'll jump right back in again. They do have the stun. Do they have enough damage for the Hella Save? The Laguna, the Rabbit they comes do. out, and they do finally manage to take down nine, and they're gonna chase down 33 as well. And a couple of these Snapfire Kisses getting tossed out. They'll be able to take down FNG, but they do get the soul bind off. Nina on to the ball. Can they get enough damage off in time here to take out Skinner? No, they don't. He's able to just time lapse right away. Staking, though, is getting chomped away here by Nico, baby. Try to chase him down, but they have the spirits blink forward here from Lim. They don't quite have that vision, though, as the cookie hop forward here. Bata will fall. Skeeter sticks around. Skeeter is still here, and he can kite them if he wants. Gonna go follow around here. They'll go with that in fast lift, chasing down over here. They get the dragon tail off. Can they just blow him up? Yes, they will. And now Snake King. Is he gonna make it out in time? Yes, just barely. The chain stuns, they come into play perfectly. Even though there's this S and Y, oh doesn't matter. God. They're able to get him down the first time, and then they have the Rex Ravage for the secondary follow-up. And we do see that life stealer just sticking onto him. And now Nico Baby almost has an AC of his own. So that minus armor will come into play. As we said, Bristleback still quite vulnerable versus that physical damage as he is a bit lacking on the armor department. Alliance with the big team fight, they do come out on top on their high ground as they need to get that defense going, but it's a big hit. You've slowed down the Tundra train. Your life is now getting his good timings. They were so patient during all of that, yep. right? He's now, you saw them. And now nine. Oh, oh. Maybe stepping up too far too. They've got Nico Baby coming over and they've got the stun. He's facing the wrong direction as well. This is not looking good for nine. He's trying to run over for Can he do it in time? It's a good stun coming out here from 33. He goes, he's trying to body block. He's trying to buy more time. He cannot do it as nine does in default. And now it's looking like 33 is the next person. And all the back of for lines as they just rip them apart. Limp gets himself a cow. Oh, and he tips 9 2 he, he knows that the way it's going. Nico Baby almost has the same net worth as this Bristle back. Now he's going to have the AC, the overwhelming physical damage to deal with him. The high ground defense is successful. And Tundra's game plan, maybe that was all it had. Maybe that could have been all the steam. Oh, it's just a little bit off with the LSA here. Limp was hoping he could Dyer's follow up with the nice dragon tail, attack. but... Already the side of Tundra, they have retreated into their base. They do not want to get caught out, but that's going to open up this middle tower now for the side of Alliance. And it, it really is just so much chain stun. Even if he has status resistance, the Dragon Tail stun talent, as we see pointed out there as well, is on line two. And now an AC for Nico Baby. So, armor department is ticked off. The Quills are going to do less damage as well. Alliance itemiz itemizing very nicely here. 
And I mean, that, I think that was actually, honestly, the push there for Tundra. That was where they have to get a Rax advantage for this draft to look good versus what they're up against. Now Alliance, they've gotten out of the base. They don't have to worry about them getting knocked on. And they can kill this Bristle. He's shown he can bleed. They want him S4 here. No blink on this Tidehunter, but he has been able to just walk in immediately. The jump forward again over here on to nine. They just, no sneaking rather. They'd be able to just blow him up. The stun comes out though here from 33. Like him a bit more time. Solar Crest are just trying to stack up all these quills, all this goo. But what else is there? That's the problem. Yep. That is indeed the problem. I love how it's losing 19 armor. It is pretty ridiculous how much it is able to do. But as you said, they, they're, they're getting these items online. They're getting every single one. Vlad's, Solar Crest, AC, all these other things. As we do see 9, he's, he's vulnerable. If he gets Solar Crested, he gets hit by a Deso and this Life Stealer hitting him. He dies quite easily now. Working on that BKB, so that way he has a little bit more survivability. He's not going to be chain stunned. Bata has to be so careful here. They don't have great jump, though, right now. Just yet. Needs baby hunting, though. Realizes that Grandma's hiding in the trees. And immediately Limp's hunting. TP out. Limp out nine. Can they actually slip on him? Though they use that whip. Can they get over there in time? That was the question. S4. Over in position. Not going to be able to quite find them in time, so they do teleport out. Doesn't quite want to blind ravage for that there. Doesn't doesn't want to whiff it just in cases. I mean, could have been the perfect ravage. It could have been, it could have been. been an absolute yeah. disaster, much like uh, the way they kind of described the thunder draft earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Right, Nico baby is just a total monster now. Look at this. 39 armor without the solar crest even buffed on him. Now armlet enabled. 46 armor. Next to that, Vlad's. Because now he's the one knocking on the high ground. And now it's the question to Tundra. They don't have the big team fight. How do they stop Nico Baby? Dyer's bottom tower and, oh, has fallen. They have no TPs. They're not. Oh. They're just letting Nico Baby oh. knock their door down. They're just going to go for Roche, but they're giving up a Rax for it. Uh, I've seen this before in a game where it was a Roche for what? Yeah, I mean, they're getting the hairball that we talked Dyer's about from earlier for nine that he did really want, but. Even the only one who picks it up, did they give it to the Weaver, actually, for the Swarm application? Okay. He's the one hanging on to it for now. Okay, he passed it off tonight. I was about to say, Dyer's this is the whole, whole reasoning you go for this type of build. So, Hairball online. The lines, they've got all these items. They've got all these ways to buff up and deal with the constant spam damage that comes out from Quill at this point. Oh. Well, when you just consider the fact that S4 has been allowed to just walk in and get these Ravages off, too, like, that's very spooky. How do they stop him at this point? He's too tanky. They don't have any type of burst damage. It's this gradual damage that comes out from Tundra that, honestly, the Alliance's draft now at this point doesn't really care about too much. They slow him down quite a bit, right? But he just, like, slowly grabs and pulls himself into the fight. Like, yeah. Ugh, I'll get there eventually, and when I do... There's the big ol' Ravage, but... All takes is one. As Nico Baby, he was going for the Scotty, but I think he's realizing. He's like, all right, well, I don't really need to actually reduce anything or move, make him move slower. More stun is going to be effective. As long as I can stick on the target, the Bristle will die. That is the plan of mine stacking up here. All that lovely Quill and Goo. He's actually queuing BKB on the Bristle. He's realizing that the stuns are just too much for him. That's quite a big concern. That runs into the issue of, you know, you've got the quills, you've got the, the goo, you need more damage. And if you're buying a BKB, mm -hmm. you're really not outputting that. I mean, the Weaver is, of course, got some of that damage online, but a bit non-traditional here in the way that this game is going for the side of Tundra. Especially if they want to be able to... The thing is, too, is like getting into the back line is going to be really important for Tundra, but they don't have the heroes to do so. They have to get through the Bruisers. They have to get through the DK, the Lifesteal, and the Tide, which are the heroes that Nine doesn't actually want to go for as much. Sure, the Quills, they're decent, but because they've gotten all this itemization of armor, it's not nearly as effective, and he'll never get to... Like, how does he get to Grim and Lina? Unless they're completely out of position, Radiance there's just very limited attack. ways for Tundra to get into the back line there. It is the Alliance recipe. It is. Just put the big, beefy boys up up front and uh, let everybody else hang back and wail away. Tundra gonna try for the push again here with this Aegis and the cheese. It feels like they have to, right? Yep. Do they have the secondary Radiance axe? They do. Okay, so they've given Skeeter that secondary axe, so he does have the time lapse with the reset. Nine. They're gonna try to fight them over here on this tower. Maybe. Just making fast Dyer's work of it, though. They're all here. Can they stun up fast into the cookout for here? Oh, Skeeter's advantage is just fold up in the plate. He doesn't have the time to even go for the time loss. He's just immediately murdered on the back lines here. They're focusing down. Fonte. He's got those kisses. They've got the stun up. They keep them up together. Plus the silence. Plus the red. Coming out from Alliance. They're shredding them over here. Another LSA getting dropped. And that's going to be the Aegis. As Snake King hides in the tree line. Up comes Nine. And into the ground. He's going to go again as they get that kill. 
That's it. That's just the game oh, right they there. Want, they want snaking so bad too. The infants cookie help from Fada. Can snaking make it back into the base in time? No, he's not. That's another kill for Nico, baby. The damage from Nico, baby. His physical damage has just been absolutely absurd. That Bristol was at negative like 13 armor. He's a solo crested him. He's death out. He's AC. He's got every single debuff on him. And now it's time to close the game. The trap. The approach was neat. The attempt was fun going for that high ground push with Aegis, but Alliance with their constant, with their just comfort, they get the setup, they get the ravage, and they take this one. Nico, baby. Cool as a cucumber. It all looks like it's a day's work for the boys over here at Alliance. You see them?